All right, welcome to the throwing demo. Uh, we've gone over the anatomy of a wheel um, in class, but just a reminder that yellow outside piece is gonna be called the splash pan. That brown disc is called a bat. The things you will need to get throwing, you're gonna need a splash pan, a bat, a bucket, a big sponge and a little sponge, um, a fettling knife, a wooden knife, and a needle tool. So first things first, we want to make sure we've got pretty good suction. So cleaning off your bat and adding a little water is going to help that happen. Um, I am just sort of pushing the clay body into place. This is going to just adhere it to the bat and I am using the side of my palm and the tips of my fingers, not the inner part of my palm, just the sides of my palm, the base, and the tips of my fingers to sort of center that into place. And what we're doing is we're bringing, coning it up, coning up, because it's sort of a, becoming a cone as we're bringing it up. So ideally to center, we want to start from the bottom, bring it all the way to the top, and go all the way back down to the base of the bat. We want to do this as many times as we need to to get it to where it's no longer wobbly. It's pretty it's running pretty evenly and smoothly and we've got a nice a nice centered surface. So centered being it's sitting in the middle of the wheel. It's not going all over the place. Um, and while you're doing this, make sure you clean off your hands. Clean hands are key when it comes to clay because if your hands are super dirty, what's going to end up happening is it's going to drag, it's going to stick. You're going to want to use more water and then your clay piece is going to be less likely to stand up solidly. So when we throw, and we're throwing a cylinder now, we want to keep in mind that we want it to be sort of a narrow, tall cone, and we're going to use our bat wings to open up that center bit. We're not pushing through with our bat wings, we're just creating a little bowl on the top. And then we're going to use our stable fingers to open in maybe a single breath, and then from there, we're going to take our needle tool and stop our wheel for just a minute. And you're going to push your needle tool down and then meet your finger at the edge. And ideally we're looking for about a quarter of an inch thickness, if not a little more. We don't want it too, too much, but starting off we don't want it to go super thin. We want enough material on the bottom to trim off later. Um, but also if we go through the bottom and we try to wire it off and it's super thin, you're gonna just cut right through the bottom of your piece. So every time you make a movement, um, and what I did right there is called compression, you're gonna wanna just ever so slightly pinch the edge of your rim between your fingers and, your, and push down with your other fingers. So we are opening up and just curving our finger in ever so slightly, and that's gonna give us a nice solid wall to start pulling in. So every time you add moisture, you're always gonna wanna take some away. So we don't wanna leave big puddles of water inside of our pot. So when we go to do a pull, you're gonna start on the outside, right, and bring it right into the center where your hands would normally sit, um, right in front of you. And you're gonna start from the outside and just pull from the outside until you meet your, your finger on the inside. And every time we do a movement like this, you want to compress that rim, clean off your hands, even up the moisture, and take some moisture out. So on the bottom, and don't move your inner hand until it meets, and then even pressure all the way up. This is If we keep that pressure even, it's going to keep our, our walls nice and even, and that's going to keep our stable structure intact. If one of our walls is any thinner in one point than it is in another, that side is going to be more likely to wiggle away or fold in or tear. So we want to make sure we try to keep 
as even pressure as we possibly can. So start from the bottom, pull up till you meet your inner hand, and then pull those two up together. I like to use my knuckles because my hands are a little small, but my knuckles are very stable points. Um, if I if I arch them in, they're not going to move around too too much. It's very important that you keep that moisture even because if it's too dry in one spot your fingers are going to catch when you try to pull and that will cause you to mess up your pot pretty badly. Now when throwing, especially with the clay we're using, we're using Laguna B mix, um, always expect to throw your piece a little bigger than what you want the finished piece to be. So if you want your cup to be five inches tall, I would I would suggest throwing it at least six inches um, because your clay is going to shrink about 15%. So this cup is going to look really big right now, but when we fire it, it's going to be a lot smaller. So I'm using my needle, my, my wooden knife as reference. My wooden knife is about six, seven inches tall. And before I get any farther, I'm going to trim off that excess material that's sitting on the bat. And I just put my needle tool, my, my wooden, wooden knife on the edge there, and then I scraped it off. And you can do that all the way up the side of your pot. Just taking off that extra material is going to help it out so much. So this cup is pretty good as it is. You could probably call it a day and go ahead and keep this. Um, but I want you to think about making shapes. So if this is not the shape you want, it'd be adventurous and try something different. So I'm using my rib to sort of take off any extra slip, clean off any extra moisture. And I'm just ever so slightly running it up the side of my cup. It's We're not pushing in really at all. We're just scraping off the side. So this is, this is pretty good. Like, arguably it's not a bad cup. Is it the cup we want? No, not by any means. So the cup I want is going to be a little more a little more rounded at the bottom. I do like the idea of a nice sort of big bellied cup. So what I did there is I used the side of my rib and my sponge on the inside, and I put the pressure on the inside of the pot, not the outside. All my outside hand was doing was just echoing the pressure from the inside, so that way it wouldn't push too far. And always try to address your rim before you call your pot done. Uh, because if you leave those edges sharp, they're just going to get sharper as we fire it. Because we're going to add like a glass element. So I'm ready to take this off. And I'm just going to use my wire tool and throw a little bit of water right here at the base. That water is going to help that wire tool slide through. And I'm going to just put spin my wheel ever so slowly and pull my wire tool through and it's gonna that water is gonna allow that cut to go all the way through and it's also gonna allow me to scoot it to the edge of my bat and what I'm gonna do with that bat is I'm just gonna put that right up next to my board and just slowly very lightly push it off onto one of those wooden boards we have available this is just one of two ways I'm gonna show you all how to take off a piece uh, but if your piece is 
dry enough and that piece wasn't too bad take it off now I want to advise before you even finish for the day if you unless your piece is super wet always take your pieces off the bat before you leave do not leave the studio if you've got pieces still on the bat um, that is something you will regret uh, and I would also advise putting a little bit of newspaper or something on those wooden boards so that way when you go to take it off the board it'll just peel right off um, it'll be easier to take care and measure drawing if your pieces are taken off the bat so before you leave for the day make sure to remove your piece from the bat.